In this video, I'll go through the process of making the bandstand clock. I was pretty happy with how it turned out, so hopefully you'll enjoy watching me make it. Going onto the lathe first is the blank for the base, and it's initially turned between centers, and then I'll turn a foot to get it in the chuck drawers. Now it's in the chuck drawers, I can begin working on the underside and all I need here is a recess so I can grip it and turn the other side. So I then sand the underside because I won't have access to it again and I'll talk more about my sanding process later on. The base now gets flipped around and gripped by the recess. Here you see me dimensioning the cove and as you may have seen at the start of the video I drew the whole assembly up on 3D CAD software and created drawings from the model to use once I was back in the real world. So I shape the cove and the rest of the top side and then I'll add this groove which appears in the final piece as decoration but it actually marks the PCD for the holes I'll have to drill later on. Using my Jacobs chuck in the tailstock I also drill the hole for the central dowel and you can see there the drill bit was vibrating and it really didn't leave the cleanest hole so maybe it was off center slightly. I also come in with a larger bit and just take the sharp corner off. So sanding the parts on the lathe here has to be done properly. I'm starting with 120 grit and working up to 600 without skipping grits. Um, especially as I'll be polishing them later on. The smoother the surface you're working with the better finish you'll get after polishing and buffing. And after a coat of oil, you can see just how nicely the grain comes out in this rosewood. So that is the base done. Apart from the four holes, but that will be done after the uprights are made. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. The next blank going on is the central support for the housing. So I would like to say a big thank you to Steve Jones for the design of this clock. Um, Steve is a fantastic turner and you should visit his page. So the dowel is turned and as you can see it was a lovely snug fit. Now some of you may be wondering why I've turned this part the wrong way round and the reason is just so that I could test the fit of the dowel but I think if I was going to do this again I would do it the other way round because especially as this diameter gets smaller it's far more unstable with more and more vibration um, and you can see it's waggling its tail as I put any pressure into the cut. It's parted off and as you can see there is one small tool mark there which I ended up hand sanding to remove it but no big deal. And one other important thing to note is that I'm not putting any oil on the dowels as these will be glued later. Uh, 
Um, I'm next going to turn the clock housing and the blank here is much thicker than it needs to be because they've all come from the same slab but I will need some waste to grip it by anyway. Now the important matter of fitting the clock in the housing um, and this one has a rubber ring which compresses into the hole slightly so the fit doesn't have to be perfect. Not, it's not too tight but it's not going to come out. And after a thorough sanding, I grip the recess in my small jaws so that I can turn the backside and radius the corner. Making the spindles is where the drawings really come in useful because I can dimension each one exactly the same from the same baseline. As you can see, I'm mainly using my one inch skew chisel for this, um, but I'm also using a gouge for the coves because it's just easier.
As you can see, the dowel currently measures 7.9 millimeters, which is actually woefully oversized. The final diameter needs to be around 7.75, so I've actually got at least 100 microns to take off yet. And after that light pass, I had a perfect 7.75, which I knew would be a sliding fit. Um, I did the same on the other end and sanded it up to 600 before oiling and parting off. So I think it came out really well and of course it was a perfect fit in my test hole. So I now have all the required parts apart from the top plate and the finial and the blanks for them are here. The next thing I'm going to make is the top plate. That will go straight into the gripper jaws. The top here is the only other cross grain piece and it's a fairly simple structure so it didn't take too long to make. I came in with the drill and you can see it just wasn't perfectly central so I decided to do that later on in the pillar drill. And to reverse it, I'm gripping the smaller bead, and this really isn't the best grip, but it won't mark the wood because the diameter is the true circle for those jaws. It comes out and you can see that it hasn't marked the wood at all. The final part to make is the finial, but unfortunately my camera decided not to film it so I can't show you, but at least you get to see the best bit. So this is all the parts for the assembly and to drill the holes accurately I drew a template on the computer which marks them for me. I'll start with a 3mm pilot hole to get the accuracy perfect and then build up to the final size. And I must say the precision in measuring really pays off. Just watch this.
So now the issue um, we're gonna have with drilling this is that we are drilling on this outside circle, which is a wider diameter than this, what it's actually sitting on. So I'm gonna start drilling into here and then it's gonna wanna do that because this underside is naturally sat on the ground. So my solution is this. So that sits in there, that sits on the bed, then all the force is going straight onto the bed and not pushing anything off. have gone through that is great news now that all of the cutting was done I could move on to the last stage of finishing which is wax buffing or polishing now I have this three stage buffing system which consists of three different wheels and three different wax compounds the wheels are made from cotton a blend of cotton and linen and pure linen respectively and the important thing with wax is that less is more I only want tiny amounts of wax to ingrain on the surface of the wood. Equally, if your surface isn't smooth enough, then you'll get bigger lumps of wax which get clogged in the open grains of the wood. And the result of all of that is a lovely glossy finish in only a couple of minutes. And after repeating with the other parts, I was ready to apply glue and assemble. The same applies with the glue, I want enough to hold it together but I don't want it seeping out everywhere and ruining the finish. All my dowels are a tight fit anyway so it really won't need much glue as it wouldn't fall apart anyway. And this is the finished item. I am pretty happy with it and I may make a batch of these at some point so please do let me know in the comments if you would be interested in buying one. This one was a birthday present for a family member and she was very happy with it um, so please let me know what you thought of it and thank you for watching. <laughs>